Well, we're here at the vet again, and Pearl's gonna hopefully get another medicine. I guess the doctor has a new idea. So, anyway, here we go. Wish us luck. <laughs> Hookworms no more. So this time, the vet gave us eight weeks worth of some more medicine, just because we're gonna be on the road. And Pearl also got a shot of ivermectin. So, hoping that that will cure and uh, rid all these hookworms. Huh, Pearl. Are you guys ready to get this channel on the road again? I know I am. We are, we have set free from the Dallas area and uh, just taking a quick potty stop for the dog and get some chapstick in the back for me. <laughs> sure feels good to be on the road again, super thrilling and um, can't wait. I'm headed down to the San Antonio area. So I'm gonna take two days to get there even though it's a four hour drive. I don't wanna be driving a lot. I just, I've found that personally I like to drive about two hours. If it's a two hour drive in a car, for me it's about four hours usually, maybe three. Just because of stopping and uh, letting the dogs out and all that, so. Anyway, I'm so excited, yay! One of the best enchiladas I had came from a gas station. Just coming up into hill country. It's so pretty in here. This is somewhere that if I brought property, I would love to live in this part of the US. A lot of pretty land and features out here. Well, I made it to the San Antonio area. I'm between Bernie and Bandera. So I'm gonna be going to check out the area and see what they've got to offer. I'm really enjoying being in hill country. It's my first time here. And I really love the terrain. Okay, JC. So check out this whole grassy area all the way out here, out to the road is fenced. It's five acres of fence. And the owners of the park said, I could let these guys run out here. I brought them out yesterday and all they did was run in a little circle and then they went and ate grass. I was kind of hoping they were going to run a bit. Pearl! Pearl! Let's go! Pearl! Come here, Pearl! There goes Pearl. <laughs> They both have their little jackets on because it's 50 degrees out. So it feels like a warm 50 degrees today. Yeah, Chase is gonna be a little deer and eat grass. Chase, Chase, come here, Chase. four-ish months, I've been at uh, parks where at the site they don't have a hookup for dumping, which means that instead of dumping, you know, before the tanks are full, I let the tanks get full, then I move my ring and dump. And because of that, the water going up and then down, 
there's sensors inside and that's how you get the readout on how full your tanks are. So over time, you know, some sediment and uh, oils build up on those sensors and then it might just say it's full all the time or half full. Like uh, my two gray tanks right now are reading half full even though they're not. A uh, black tank is reading full even though it's not. So I'm, uh, because I've not been at a place with the massive convenience of a uh, sewage dump right next to, you know, right at my site, I haven't had the luxury to, you know, fill my tanks and dump and, um, you know, with just cleaning stuff. So that's what I'm doing today and uh, um, hoping to uh, hoping to get those readings to clear out. Plus just clean the tanks, it's always a good idea too. And I highly recommend, I have my, uh, I have very specific cleaners that I use and I totally recommend a video I did earlier. Definitely check it out. Uh, it'll tell you, you know, the chemistries of uh, and, and why and uh, stuff like that. And um, anyway, they're my uh, definite definite go-to chemicals for cleaning. And they're basic, and you can find them at any grocery store. Yeah, baby, clean tanks. Well, the other day when I was opening up my slide, the laundry door was slightly out and it got caught on the slide. And now I can't operate the slide uh, normally. One side goes faster than the other. So I'm going to have to troubleshoot that. That sucks. Well, I found the access point, it was behind, there was a little wall here, and I had to tear apart my bin, but I found where my controllers are, and with the little codes, the error codes that it's giving me, I see that there is a wire short between controller and motor up above. So that's not exciting. I was hoping that it was like a retiming thing or, you know, something I could <laughs> easily fix. I have heard that the wires that they will, some of these manufacturers will put between the controllers and the slides are the absolute minimum gauge or size of wire for the amount of power or amps that's needed. And because of that, sometimes the slides can run slow or like in my case, could have um, shorted out by trying uh, too hard to get past that door. If it's a short, that means this whole wire has to be replaced. Well, you can barely see Rhea Rada's getting backed in over there. Oh, no, I used to call her Rhea Rada. I call Chase Andiamo all the time. <laughs> anyway, I freaking have to get the slide repaired. Um, it's out of... It's, it's out of timing, but it also might be out of gear. If it's just out of timing, you can usually do it yourself. So I tried that. I, you know, looked at videos on YouTube to try to retime it. And uh, I think it just might be out of gear. So I let the guy know everything I knew and uh, sucks. I, ha I hate, <laughs> I want to do everything myself. So it's really hard. It's also hard watching him drive my truck and back it in and, um, Anyway, hoping to have the slide fully fixed so it goes out smoothly, comes back in. So they found that it was the wiring harness, it's basically the wire that goes from the controller, which is down in the bay, up to the motor. The motor's fine. They said that uh, when the slide got hung up on the closet door, though my fault. <laughs> um, Turn left oops. on Ralph Fair Road. Get my directions right now. And, uh, let's see. So anyway, it was a hundred bucks to diagnose it. It's 80 bucks for the part and almost freaking $400 for them to actually do the work. Holy moly. So, uh, I'm either going to eat it or I can, uh, maybe do it myself. I, don't, I haven't looked at any kind of wiring in mine. Um, so that is the update. Shh, crap. 
sucks. Well, I'm stopping by a friend of a friend's property to experience a little bit of beekeeping. Maintenance on the bees can happen about once a week and what he's doing right now is the bees have gotten a, uh, a type of mite that when they're out traveling around the mites get on them and then they bring the mites back to the hive and so then those mites need to be treated. So today he's putting in some strips that have a chemical on them that will uh, hopefully get rid of the mites so that the hive uh, is parasite free. How can you tell if it's a drone bee or not? See how much bigger? Ah, yeah. What did you say that the drone bee's job is? To impregnate the queen. Oh, okay, okay. That's it, that is. And then the worker bees bring back pollen. Right. Okay. These beekeepers have four hives on their property and they get roughly 40 gallons of honey a year. So that's about 10 gallons Per hive. Okay, so what we're looking for here are eggs, which there's nothing in that one. No eggs in there. What do you what what do you do with the eggs? Nothing. You're just wanting to see that, make sure that they're present. Oh, okay. The all those capped are eggs. If you get close enough, you can actually see the larvae down inside the white larvae down inside those caps. Those are baby bees. You can see there's layers to the hive. It has different shelves and the bottom shelves tend to be where the bees will keep their brood that's where all the eggs are and then the top layers will have all of the honey so that's all honey wow. that's incredible. and how do you harvest that so you take it and put it in a centrifugal spinner you cut the caps off and you put it in the spinner and it spins it so fast, all the honey draws out and goes to the bottom. And do you have to get all the bees off of those things before, of course, then, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, that was so cool. I didn't know it, but that's a bucket list item I checked off for myself. Be sure to check out some of my recent videos to get a tour of my new rig and say goodbye to Rio Rada. You can also connect with me and follow more Pippinings on my Facebook and Instagram account. Thanks so much for watching.